Ugh, what day is it? Maybe I should stop playing Mass Effect and make a tutorial. Or maybe I can just make a 10 minute video of me playing Mass Effect. What's up YouTube? Welcome to today's tutorial on sky replacement and track mats in Nuke. Now, if you go down to the link below, you'll be able to download the project files such as our source footage and which is really just an image I pulled off of Bing and the beach scene which I also pulled off of Bing that we will be replacing the sky with. So let's get started. Also the project file will be in there so you can download that too. So as always, first thing, open up Nuke. Nope. And let's get started. So for those of you not familiar with this Nuke X interface, this right here is where all the effects are. And then up here is the viewer, which you won't see anything because nothing is in. So if, like After Effects, you're going to want to drop in your source footage. You can either go up here and hit Read or hit R or there's a third option and that is to just manually drag in your footage which I prefer because it's faster and easier to do with multiple clips. So now that source footage is in, you still won't see anything because our viewer node isn't connected. You can either connect it using this arrow or by hitting one on the number pad. And then I like to snap it in for organizational purposes. Now we see our source image in here. You can zoom in, zoom out, drag around using the middle mouse click or hit H to center it. And now let's get started. So the main difference between After Effects and Nuke is that After Effects puts the animation first and Nuke puts the effects first while the effects are hidden. So if you want to animate something or position keyframes, go to the Curve Editor or the Dope Sheet, one of these two. Curve Editor allows you to adjust the smoothness of the transition and keyframes and also the position. So Let's start messing with the sky. Now to drop in a new node, you can either go up here to one of these if you're unsure of what to do and you just want to browse the, uh, the possible effects. Or if you're sure which one you want to do, you can hit tab and you can search. So the first node we want to drop in is a saturation. So hit sat, type in SAT, and drop a saturation and connect the open arrow to the uh, read node and now we don't see anything so drop the saturation and we still don't see anything that is because we don't connect we don't have this one connected to the viewer you can do this one of two ways you can either hit one again and connect it to the same viewer but now if we have a bunch of nodes we have to find the first node and connect it again or you can hit two and it will allow you to switch back and forth. If you go up here and hover over the viewer, you can switch between one and two by hitting one and two. You can have up to nine connected at once, which will be a lot, but you can. And switch between all by hitting the number keys. And that will really speed up if you want to show multiple things or switch back and forth and compare. So now the we're going to be working on the second view right now, so under the saturation. Now we have saturation down, you want to blow out the sky, so add an exposure, EXP. And we're really going to bring that sky out, so just blow it out. But not too much that you start messing with detail. Do it just enough so that all the sky de detail vanishes. Now I'm using these trees as a reference because it's a very they're very detailed. There's a lot of little intricate little points in there that light is going to be shining through. A simple roto won't take this out. And unless you have the world's biggest green screen, you could never key this out in a million years. So that's why we use track mats. Again, if you look over here, you can see there's still a lot of detail being remained. And if you hit tab, that switches to 3D view, but we're not going to be using that, which I actually keep doing. So that's why it keeps going black. So next thing we're going to want to add is a posturize, so hit pos, post, and drop that in there. And you might say, what the heck just happened? Well, what it's doing is, if you look up here to this menu, 
it's only allowing 16 colors to pass. So six, uh, really, it's only 16 shades of gray. And I keep switching back some. So what we want to do is we want to drop this down to about three. Actually, 2.2 is pretty good. Mess with it a little bit. You can also go to the exposure and you can mess with the exposure. This will allow you to choose what kind of detail gets through and posturize what level of detail shows. Really the only ones we're going to be keeping is black. Now you can see we kept a lot of detail. Uh, little bits like here that you see just floating, those aren't that big of a deal because remember your camera's probably not going to pick up so you're not going to see those little things. Also, if you look at the original image, this is a metal surface, so it's going to be reflecting the sky. So we want to key that out in order to make it look like the sky is actually there, and that it's not just retaining the original sky. So if you have a little bit of garbage, you can add a histogram, which we really don't have that much garbage, but just to create garbage, I'm going to add a few more colors. I'm going to change this to like 2.05. And uh, just for tutorial's sake, and add a little bit of transparent, transparent sections, so that way you can see what you want to get rid of. And now I'm going to add a histogram. For those of you who don't know, histogram is, if it was an audio, it'd be referred to as like clipping. So you're really just allowing certain ones to pass. So you want to drag the highs down until the gray goes away. Now that was really easy. It just kind of clips away. Um, and I'm not going to do that. If you want to see the difference between something, you can select a node and hit D, and I'll change it. But, um, yes, yeah, this is going to look worse than it did before the histogram, just because, um, I wanted to show you guys that. But it's really not that bad, so you don't, it really doesn't matter. But, if you look, it's really pixelated, and it doesn't look good. So, hit tab, add in a blur. Blur all. Drag that down. To organize like this is the black and white area. I just, this is making a threat, you know, doing the threshold effect. I separate it just a little bit by a little gap and it's easier to see. Now, double click the blur node and open it up here and change the size of the blur. I'm going to go up to about 1.5. That looks good. Like that. Hit H. And now we have our two different images. We have our matte and we have our solid. Now, how do we combine these two? Well, we're going to use something called a shuffle copy. And that is going to allow us to take the black and white and change it into alpha for this image. So drop this in and then drag the arrow to number one arrow to blur. And now go over here to the shuffle and change number one to anything. It can be red, it can be green, or green, it can be blue. I'm just gonna set it to blue because, or actually I'm gonna set it to red because red's my favorite color. But you'll see nothing happen. That is because we're not viewing the alpha channel. To ch view the alpha channel, hit A. Now if you wanted to view the red, green, or blue, just hit the RGB keys, but we're going to view the alpha, so hit A. And now we can see that it morphed to the blur, and it looks good now. But hit A again, and it'll bring you back to the RGB view. Drag this down, and now, it, again, if you go back to alpha, white means it's opaque and solid, black means it's transparent. So right now, the sky the only thing that's going to be replaced is the castles, and we want the sky to be replaced. So drop in an invert, and if you just look at the RGB, you'll see it inverts the colors, and we don't want that. So go up to channels and only invert the alpha. And now if you hit A, you can see the alpha is perfectly inverted. And that's good. So, yeah, keep that. Go back to RGB and drop in a merge 
or just hit M on your keyboard and I'll drop in a merge. And then we need our background. So drop in the background source like so and connect A to the background source and you'll see it doesn't look that good. That is because we need to change this to under. Now it still doesn't look that good because we have the original sky over it. That is because we're using unpremultiplied footage. So select these and drag those down so we can have a little bit of room here and drop in a premult, which is pre stands for pre-multiply. And that pretty much fixes our problem right there. But say we want to make that sun over here a little bit, move it. You can either go over here and drop in transform or hit T. And you can control it by using this little gizmo. Drag the normal area for the middle area for panning. Drag this for scale, although I wouldn't recommend using that scale because it's really twitchy. Or you can drag this handle for rotate, or this for s these little handles for skew. I'm just gonna move it a little bit. Now, if you were to have it up here, it wouldn't look that good because of the way the original footage is shot. It look really weird. So if you want it to look right, oops, drag this down towards the bottom. That looks good. But now we have this little black area up here. So to fix that, it should be really easy. I'm going to change the Y scale to like, to up a little bit. And I'm going to change this to like one point. Whoops, I changed the rotation. I didn't want to do that. To like one point. Actually, to point oh nine maybe, and that's going to be good. We don't want it stretch out too much, but we also don't want it clipping into it. So that's decent, and it doesn't look that bad. The sun still looks pretty round to the untrained eye, and we have our sky replacement is coming along pretty nicely. But if you look, it looks kind of weird because this is a very yellow light coming onto it. And we want a actual redder light. Whoops, I forgot. So just select this node. And if you want to erase all these windows, you can just exit out like that. I'd recommend exiting out because it really helps. Now, we need a color correction. So hit tab and type in color correct drop that in and because we're changing the light we want to change the gain so go over here to the master gain and now if you notice if I were to make this green it's affecting the entire image and that is not what we want we only want it to affect the castles so what I'm going to do is I could either do this two ways I could either drop this color correction before the merge, but because I don't feel like doing that and I'd rather teach you some more things, we can use a mask. And we're going to mask this to the infrared alpha. But if I were to just let go now, it'd get really confusing and I'd lose the two arrows because they're overlapping each other because it's a straight line. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab, I'm going to type in dot, I'm going to add a dot, and then... I'm going to... No, I didn't want to do that. Hit tab again, add another dot. Not there. Wow, this is really not liking me today. Dot. And then drag the mask to the dot, and then drag the input of the dot to the invert alpha. Actually, probably the pre -mult. Yeah, that sounds good. That looks good. And I don't like diagonal nodes because they clip into each other, like if I were to do that. So if you hit control, it'll bring up these little diamonds. If you hit control and then drag out one of these diamonds, it'll create a new point. We couldn't do that because there's no here because there's no line. But now we can because there are lines. And now it looks nice because we know exactly where it's going. And we just masked our out our thing. 
So if I were to disable this dot, which I don't think I can do that, but if I were to switch, you it's not color correcting the sky anymore, to just simplify it. But now if we go over here and go on a color wheel, we can still change this to whatever we wanted. If we wanted a nice blue, we could. But I'm going to change this to more of a reddish color, more of a yellowy red. That looks good. And we are pretty much done with this. This looks pretty good. If you wanted to add something like volume rays, you could, but that's way too... That would take way too long for this tutorial. Let's see, where's volume rays? Volume rays is right here. No. Here. If you go to this little circle and then go to volume rays, you can just drop that in and then mess with it if you wanted to. I have absolutely no idea how to do it. That was really confusing. I was trying to do it for this tutorial. But, um, yeah, you don't need to. But that is the basics for sky replacement. And I'm going to be doing tutorials again every single other Monday, like I normally do. And I hope you found this helpful. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them. If you have any questions, send me a message, or again, post a comment below. Um, subscribe, if, subscribe if you like this video, and I will see you the Monday after Monday.